This last winter, my fiance and I finally decided to take the leap and escape Canada for the winter. Last summer, while browsing on Airbnb, we randomly just found an apartment in Barcelona and booked it. Neither of us have ever traveled for that long before. And thankfully, because of the nature of our work, we're both photographers. We don't really have work in the wintertime. Most of our work is seasonal. It's very busy for us in summer. That being said, I can make a whole video as to some of the sacrifices we made and everything in order to save up and go on this grand adventure. And I definitely have a video planned for Barcelona. But today I'd love to tell you about our time in Morocco, give you a little bit of insight on that. Just kind of wanted to share with you what I packed and what I wore in Morocco and just how we managed to fit 10 days of clothing for the two of us in one single carry-on. Packing for this trip was actually a lot easier than I anticipated, primarily because we already had such limited wardrobes when we came to Spain. I mean, trust me, we brought a lot more with us to Spain. We came with like two full-size suitcases. We brought a lot more of our gear, camera gear. As like I said, we had just rented one Airbnb and we're planning on staying put. But during the three month period that we were over there, we had planned on doing two trips. One was to Portugal with my family, which I can also make a video about. And the other was an absolute bucket list trip for me. And that was to Morocco. In order to make that trip happen, we definitely did not go all out. We were trying to stick to a very tight budget. And so when we booked those Ryanair flights, we chose to only buy one carry-on. Honestly, the more I've traveled, the more I feel like I could probably just go with a personal item. I actually don't need that much stuff. And most of my closet mixes and matches and works together. But the fact that we're photographers, just means that we have a whole lot less room for clothes and literally the majority of our personal items are taken up with camera gear and lenses and like a tripod and all that kind of stuff and we definitely knew that we were going to be seeing some wildlife on this trip so we did end up bringing our biggest lens so that alone took up the majority of my fiance's backpack but overall uh, we did manage to just stick to the one carry-on and it worked out great for us it's just so much easier to travel with a carry-on in this video i won't be diving too much into our itinerary and what we saw and what we did if you want to see a full guide i did make an entire blog post on our trip there our 10 day trip including like tips and tricks and just general safety information and basically just everything that i wish that i would have known prior to going on that trip i'll have that blog post linked down below as well as my blog post on what to pack for your 10 day Morocco itinerary. One thing I did not anticipate about Morocco was just how big it is. I actually did my final research project on Morocco when I was obtaining my tourism degree, but I still like forgot just how fast the country is. So when it came time to plan, we just didn't get to fit in as much as we would have liked. We definitely want to go back. We decided to stick to just Marrakesh, Fez, and a trip to the Sahara. And honestly, that wasn't really enough time to see all of those places. We obviously checked the forecast before we went on this trip and in seeing the forecast, even though it was winter when we went, we went in the beginning of February. Uh, it was forecasted to be around 25, 26 every day that's Celsius. And as Canadians, that's like very warm for us. So although we did pack some layering pieces for the evening, we mostly stuck to like lightweight, breathable pieces that would be good both for modest purposes and for warmer weather. But unfortunately, I mean, honestly, it's, it's wonderful for the country. They were actually apparently according to many people we spoke with, the country had been in like a three year period of drought. And of course, as soon as we landed, uh, it rained <laughs> and it was cloudy almost our entire trip. And when there's no sun in the desert, it gets very, very cold. I do not think that it got over 14, 15 degrees Celsius our entire trip. And at night it got down to like, I think two, two degrees. So we definitely were not dressed appropriately for this vacation. Most days I ended up layering 
like all of my clothes on top of each other just to stay warm, especially when we were on our desert tour. So if you are going to Morocco in the winter, it does get cold. Don't think that just because you're going to a desert, it's going to be warm, you're going to be fine. Bring a weather appropriate clothing, please. <laughs> That being said, do I think that we would have been able to pack weather appropriate clothing into one carry-on? I don't. I don't think it would have been enough room. But if you're going in some of the warmer months, a carry-on is truly all you need. Obviously, the easiest tip to packing light is to wear some of your heaviest items on the plane, so that's what I did. I wore my sneakers and my big bulky sweater and my heaviest pair of trousers when we were traveling to the country, but everything else I managed to fit into my half of the carry-on. And no, I did not overstep. I feel like if I run down through the entire list of things that I packed, this video will be very boring if it just becomes like a, a list video. So if you do want to see a list, of course, it'll all be listed in that blog post that I mentioned, as well as if you're looking for any kind of similar pieces to ones that I wore, I did link a bunch. Of course, I do get a lot of my clothes vintage or secondhand, so they're not always the exact ones, but I, I try my best to find dupes. I will, however, highlight some of my few most standout pieces, the ones that were workhorses on this trip, the ones that I got the most use out of. And in general, I did pack three outer layers, seven tops, four bottoms, and three pairs of shoes. And honestly, if it hadn't been so cold, that would have been more than enough to mix and match and give me the variety of outfits that I desire. For shoes, like I mentioned, I did bring my sneakers, but I did also bring a pair of flats that I'd recently picked up in Barcelona. These are the shoes that I think I wore the most. Just because I found in the Medinas and in the desert as well, I didn't really want to pull out my white sneakers. I just was worried that they were going to get too dirty or wrecked or get motor oil on them. So my leather flats ended up being my go-to. My sandals I didn't really wear that much just because it was so cold like I had mentioned. And speaking of motor oil, I actually ruined my favorite cream pair of trousers on this trip because when I was walking through one of the squares in Marrakesh, I actually stepped on like a rock or something and it kicked up all this motor oil onto my pants and the black motor oil just like I did not have anything to remove that stain during that time. Thankfully it was kind of all over the back of my pants and I do still wear them right now because I love those pants so much and until I find like a really good replacement I'll honestly probably keep them as kind of like just like a throw around casual pair of whatever pants. So just be mindful of that when you're in Morocco. I mean really anywhere if you're traveling, don't wear things that you don't want to get wrecked. Because it was so cold, I definitely wore that navy wool sweater way more times than I thought I would have. I just started to throw it on even whether or not it went with an outfit and sometimes when I was taking photos I would like take off the sweater. Honestly, in hindsight, we both probably should have just caved and bought wool caftans. Now in packing for this trip, my number one goal when I travel is because I am a tourist and it's not my place, I do really want to always be very respectful of the culture and so I tried to dress as modestly as possible. And while I think it's absolutely okay if you want to do you and you feel more comfortable in less modest clothing and you can definitely do that in Mor Morocco, I saw tons of women wearing, you know, dresses or shorts above their knees. I saw lots of shoulders. I even saw crop tops, lots of midriff. Especially in Marrakesh, I just think that like there was such a wave of influencers that came to Marrakesh that I think you could probably get away with most things. But I personally just really wanted to be respectful and also not draw a lot of attention to myself. I only wore long, loose, flowing pants. I never showed off my decolletage. And I always wore kind of a loose, flowing tops. And they were always long sleeve. 
As a general rule from what I was researching, if you want to kind of be modest, the expectation is that your shoulders are covered and your knees are covered and that you don't aren't showing any cleavage or anything. But if you wanted to go the extra mile like I did, you could wear things that are covering up to your ankles, your wrists, and kind of up to your neck as well. And if you wanted to, you could also cover your hair. Although while we were there, we pretty much didn't see any women covering their hair, just older women or women in the villages and some of the smaller places towards the Sahara. Otherwise, to be honest, most younger women kind of just dress just like me, especially in Fez where there's a quite a few universities. A lot of the women dressed very much like you'd see where I'm from. I think the key with packing so light is to keep your clothing relatively lightweight as well. Even if you're traveling somewhere in the winter, it's better to have more thin, warm quality layers, like a cashmere base layer or something, than really big bulky pieces. And I mean, in the summer having loose, like linen clothing is honestly your best bet for staying cool. I think another reason why it was so easy for me to pack for this trip was because my wardrobe is already pretty limited. I have a limited color palette, I have limited number of styles, pretty much everything in my closet already mixes and matches, and that's really the key to any capsule wardrobe or travel wardrobe. There's really no sense in packing something if you can't wear it in multiple ways. For example, both of the button-up shirts that I brought, I wore both as kind of your typical button-up shirt, but I also wore them as dusters throughout the trip. This works great, not only if you're trying to be more modest, but if you're trying to stay warmer like I was. One thing that honestly took up way too much room in my suitcase was my round basket bag that I bring with me everywhere, but it just worked so well with so many of the outfits, and I love how small it is, it's great for travel, but it fits just enough of everything that I need. So for me, it was a priority to be able to fit it into my suitcase. But my little packing hack there is I actually put all of my underwear inside of my rattan bag while traveling. A couple other accessories that I brought with me were my woven belt. I absolutely love this piece. It's super fun. And then I brought a couple scarves with me as well. I brought a small square silk scarf, which is kind of just like a nice detail element for any outfit. I like to wear it around my neck or even sometimes I'll tie it onto my bag. But the other longer scarf I brought actually with me from Canada in anticipation for this trip because I was thinking that if I needed to cover like my shoulders or my hair or something, I could always use that item and because it is so lightweight it packs really well. Now if you're kind of an Instagirly or photographer like myself maybe you plan your outfits around like photo locations like I do. I definitely always keep that in mind when I'm traveling just what kind of like colors I'll be seeing and making sure that my wardrobe kind of complements that and honestly with all the bright fun colors of Morocco and even the beautiful tones of the sand and the Sahara I honestly feel that like a white or a cream complements them best because then when you're wearing all white you just really stand out among all the beautiful rich colors. So that might be something you might consider when packing for your Morocco trip. So not only did I manage to pack all those clothes, I actually bought two pieces while I was in Morocco. If you've been following along with my journey, you know I'm moving towards a more ethical and sustainably sourced wardrobe. So I've been really, really limiting my shopping this year and only shopping from places that I can feel good about shopping at. This is just kind of a choice that I've made recently and I feel like it's really important for me, so I've been really sticking to that. But while we were in Marrakesh, I stumbled on this beautiful designer store called Hanout. I might be saying that wrong, I'm not sure but it's this like stunning little boutique and they actually have an online store and it's linked in that blog post. And I ended up purchasing this stunning like burnt red colored dress. I just couldn't resist, it was so stunning. It's like, it's not even on my shopping list or anything like that, but it's just like such a one of a kind piece. And actually the first day that I went in, I tried on this dress and the lady at the boutique had come in and started like pinning the dress and she just basically wanted the dress to fit me really well so she offered to send it off to their warehouse and get it perfectly tailored to my body like overnight and honestly it was just one of the most 
like personable shopping experiences I ever had. They actually took in the shoulders of the dress a little bit so that it would sit better on my frame. And I just loved the way that it looked so much when I came back the next day that I ended up buying a pair of trousers there as well. And again, without me even asking or suggesting, they took in the waist for me and the pair of pants was ready the next day. And it was just like, it just felt so special. And yeah, I, I loved it. The prices were more affordable in their shop right in Marrakesh, but their online store is stunning. So definitely worth checking out. Even though our trip to Morocco wasn't the best, um, I have our full nightmare of a tour story on that blog post that I mentioned. Um, I absolutely loved the country itself. I would go back in a heartbeat. It's just such a truly like beautiful and inspiring place. And I'm so glad I went. It was somewhere that I'd wanted to go for a very long time. Like I said, I had actually done my final project on it. And it was just such a wonderful experience if you're kind of an artist or a renaissance person like myself to see all like the colors and the artisan crafts it's just yeah wow but if you like this video please be sure to give it a thumbs up if you have any questions about morocco feel free to reach out ask me a question leave a comment i'd be happy to answer and i know this video didn't really talk about my time in morocco so if you'd like to see a video on that please let me know i'd be happy to talk more but otherwise check out the blog post in the meantime. Thanks so much for watching.